I'm Josh with Tactical Tech. Today we're going to create a form real quick in Adobe Lifecycle and it's just a quick tutorial on Lifecycle Designer ES 8.2 uh, mainly because I could not find a video that had just a real quick down and dirty of how to do this stuff. So it's taken a little while to open so just hang tight. Alright, there we go. Uh, we got new form and we'll go ahead and create blank form. Go to next. And we're going to stick with the default and portrait. That's going to give us a letter style form. Uh, we'll unclick the print and email button because I don't want to deal with those today. And we're just going to create a form that somebody can type up real quick and print out. And uh, of course in Adobe Reader people aren't able to save the form. So that's all the information I need to do. Real quick uh, overview of what's going on here. In here you got all the designer objects laid out. Uh, over here you got a couple tabs. You got the design view which we're going to be working with primarily. You got the XML source. You can actually type what you want in there sort of like an HTML document or preview PDF which just gives you a real quick preview of what the PDF is going to act like uh, most of the time. Hasn't been working for me lately so we'll see if it works today. Uh, over here you got your object library. You just drag drop that stuff on the screen whatever you want and then you have for each object the properties down in this lower right hand corner. So uh, without further ado I want to go ahead and start with the text and this is sort of acting like a label that is uneditable by the user himself and we'll just call this ugly form and we can change the layout of it, make it bold, all the regular stuff that you should be able to do with any decent kind of editing software. So we got our header right there. Uh, the next thing I want to do is start adding in some information that the user can actually type in. Uh, right here is just a caption for this uh, object. It's just a text field and we'll go ahead and call that last name. And uh, the caption itself is completely unrelated to the name of the object itself that we use in the XML source or over here in this little form here and it's really important to have names in those uh, names for each object that are easy to identify. I'll show you why later. A uh, couple things with these properties. You can change caption from here. You can change uh, what type of a uh, box it is, whether it's solid box, underlined, uh, we'll go ahead and stick with sunken box. You can change the border right here. Uh, you can make a solid and uh, actually define each edge of the border. Uh, for right now I'll just go ahead and make it solid 0.2 inch and why not make it green. Really ugly. huh? Alright, another thing that took me a while to figure out because the palette wasn't readily available, if you click this little box or right mouse click the object itself and go down to palettes, go to layout, and uh, there's a couple other little palettes in there that aren't over here in the default in the properties box. Uh, won't get into too much. Uh, you can actually change the position of the caption so it'll be on the top, on the bottom, whatever you want to do. I'll go ahead and stick with the top for now. And that'll make a cool little form that might end up looking like this when you're done with it. Made this a couple weeks ago. Give you something that looks a little bit like this. So, go ahead and close out of that. And uh, we can go ahead and right mouse and copy that. Go ahead and paste. Undo, undo the size object, move that in place, we can go ahead and change the, the name of the object itself, and we can change the caption there, and let's say I want to get rid of that ugly green thing, I can go ahead and highlight both of these and uh, go down to border and let's just do none on the border to make it simple and it automatically gets rid of in both objects nice little feature uh, next thing I'm gonna go ahead and throw on there is over in the object library we got the date time field and same thing as text box you can go to palettes layout 
and change the position of this caption. Go ahead and put it on top and move that in place. Uh, another cool thing that we have here are the tables. And by default, it, we can go ahead and change the amount of columns, amount of rows, and include a header row. And a 4x3 sounds good to me. Go to OK. And these create, by default, a bunch of text fields or uh, fields that the user won't be able to update. Uh, what I want to go ahead and do with this is uh, the header row will be uneditable stuff and same thing with this first column here and uh, these nine these nine fields I want to go ahead and create a text box with so I'll just hold the shift button while clicking the top left hand corner and then hold the shift button and click the right bottom corner. Uh, we can edit all those all in the exact same time but going over to the object, click down and we'll go ahead and make them all into text fields right there and we make them all editable text fields. You'll notice that they change to orange color. Uh, the last thing I want to go ahead and throw in here is a signature field and the cool thing about the signature field, it's sort of like text field. Uh, you can digitally sign it and uh, one of the features with this software is when you digitally sign it, by default, it locks out all the fields in the document so you can't edit any of the fields any longer after it's been signed. Uh, be a good thing for legal purposes and all. Uh, what we want to do is just lock out a couple of fields. So uh, I'll go ahead and in new manage collection, create a new, and we're just going to call that lockout and we'll go to modify and I just want to lock out the last name and the first name fields up here. Just go to OK and then close. Go ahead and file save that. Yep. And let's see if my preview PDF is working out today. Apparently it's not working out in my uh, on my computer. Hopefully it's working out on yours, so I'll just go over and open it up in Adobe Acrobat itself. And there we go. We got our user editable text fields. Give this uh, gives me a little cool drop down box here. You can edit that stuff in there. And then when I'm ready, I can go ahead and digitally sign it, and it should lock out the last name and the first name field only. Sign it. It's allowing me to save this as something else so I don't overwrite it. And it digitally signed it, made these two fields totally un-updatable, but I can still throw in some stuff right there, there, and save it there. Now, like I said, you can only save this uh, through Adobe Acrobat, so uh, that might be a problem if you have Adobe Reader. Uh, but anyway, that's quick, down, and dirty on an ugly form of how to do live cycle. Hope this helped you out. Wish I had something like this when I was trying to figure out all this stuff. Uh, but thanks for watching. You have a nice day.